Alright, in this video I'm going to talk about using the first derivative to figure out where a function is increasing and where it's decreasing. And you can also use that to figure out local maximums and local minimums of a function. So to start off with, kind of a trivial example here, just to illustrate what's going on though, and maybe kind of convince you that it does work. Here I've got the graph of um, y equals x squared. Recall that's a parabola. It's easy to see that there's a local minimum at 0, 0. And you can see that it's decreasing from negative infinity to 0, and it's increasing from 0 to infinity. Okay, well, if you've got the graph, it's pretty easy to spot this stuff, but, you know, obviously we're going to want a more sort of calculus-y sort of way to do it. Um, and what we do is we take the derivative of whatever function you're given, hence the first derivative test, or so the derivative of x squared is 2x. <clears throat> now what we do is, once we have the derivative, we want to figure out two things. And this is always true in general. We want to figure out where the derivative equals 0, and we want to figure out where the derivative is undefined. Okay, and when we find these values, if these values are in the domain of the original function, we call those x-coordinates critical numbers. So they'll often say, find the critical numbers of the function. So in this case, if I set 2x equal to 0, that's going to give me x equals 0. And there's no place where 2 times x is undefined. So I've only got one critical number. Again, notice 0 is in the domain of x squared. Every number is. So that's my only critical number. And next what we do is we look at the sign of the derivative. So I usually make a little number line and I plot all of my critical numbers. In this case, I've only got one of them. You don't want to plug this number back into the derivative because that's what gives you 0, obviously. The idea is you, you're going to want to take numbers basically inside of each interval. So if I take a number smaller than 1, say negative 5, you go back and put it inside the derivative. If I put negative 5 into the derivative, I'm going to get negative 10. And what that means is, is that the derivative is negative everywhere over here. I'm going to take a number larger than 0, a billion. If I put that into the derivative, I'm going to get a positive number. And the idea is wherever the derivative is negative, that's where your original function is decreasing. And notice from negative infinity to 0, my original function is decreasing. Wherever the derivative is positive, that means your function is increasing. And again, notice from 0 to infinity, my original function is increasing. And if you kind of connect the arrows, basically it says the graph is going from down to up. So if the derivative changes sign from down to up, well, what must happen is you must have a local minimum at that particular x-coordinate. And we do, in fact have a local minimum at that particular x-coordinate. So this is the basic idea. Take the derivative, figure out where it's 0, where it's undefined, and then on those intervals just figure out if your derivative is positive or negative. So let's take some more complicated examples here. So let's look at the function Suppose I have x squared minus 1 raised to the third power. Okay, so again, the first thing I do is I take the derivative. So the derivative, I'm going to have to use the chain rule. So the 3 comes out front. I leave the inside alone. Take 1 away from the power. Then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. And I always clean this up at this point. So I can take 3 times 2x and get 6x, and then I've still got x squared minus 1 quantity squared. 
Okay, so now I have to find my critical numbers. So I have to set this derivative equal to 0. And I also have to figure out where it's undefined. Well, again, there's no value of x that's going to make this function undefined. If I set each piece equal to 0, 6x equal to 0, I'll get x equals 0. That's going to be one of my critical numbers. Again, noting that 0 is in the domain of the original function. If I set the other piece equal to 0, well, 0 squared, I'm going to need 0 on the inside to get a 0 out. So if I set this equal to 0, I can now factor this as x minus 1, x plus 1 equals 0. And now if I set each piece equal to 0, I'll get x equals 1 and x equals negative 1 as two more critical numbers. So in this example, I have three critical numbers. All right, well, I'm going to plot those. Here's 0, here's negative 1, and here's positive 1. So again, I'm thinking about the sign of f prime. And I'm going to rewrite this original derivative one more time. I'm going to write it as 6x. I can write it as x minus 1, x plus 1, quantity squared. And maybe that's not quite relevant, but we'll see. Now I've got four intervals. I've got stuff to the left of negative 1. I've got stuff in between negative 1 and 0. I've got stuff between 0 and 1. And then I have numbers greater than 1 that I'm going to have to plug into the derivative. Again, when I pick any number in that interval, if I get something positive, that means the function's increasing. If I get a negative number, that means it's decreasing. So in this case, honestly, I think factoring it out maybe was a little pointless. Let's take any number, say greater than 1. Let's check this interval first. So here's my derivative. Notice if you plug any number into the x squared minus 1 part, since you're squaring it at the end, you're always going to get something positive. And we're not plugging in 1, 0, or negative 1, so we're not going to get 0 out um, in either place. So in a sense, I can almost forget about the x squared minus 1 squared part, because I'm always going to get a positive sign from that. So if I take something larger than 1, well, 6 times something positive is going to be positive, And that means my function is increasing. So again, these aren't increasing, decreasing signs. These just mean those are the intervals I have to check. Likewise, if I take something between 0 and 1, if I plug it in here, I'm going to get something positive. I'm definitely going to get something positive here. That means the function's increasing on that interval. And likewise, if I use um, something between 0 and negative 1, maybe negative 1 half, I'll get a negative number here. I'll get a positive number here, again, because I'm squaring it. A negative times a positive is a negative. That means the function is decreasing. Likewise, if I plug in negative 3, this will be negative, this will be positive. Again, my function is decreasing. So you could say that the function is decreasing on the interval negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 0, and then it's increasing on 0 to 1 and 1 to infinity. And the only place where the function changes from either decreasing to increasing or increasing to decreasing is at the x-coordinate of 0. So we could say at x equals 0, the original function f of x is going to have or has a local minimum. Again, if it goes from decreasing to increasing, it's going to bottom out, and that's going to be a local minimum. If we wanted to get that actual value out, so we know it occurs at 0, now we do plug this coordinate back into the original. And that's really the only time we go back and touch the original function, is just to get that y coordinate out of where the local minimum or local maximum occurs. If we plug 0 in, we're going to get negative 1 cubed, which is just negative 1. So this function has a local minimum at the x-coordinate of 0. You could say its value is negative 1. 
or you could just say there's a local minimum of 0, negative 1, and that kind of covers both bases. All right, and so here's kind of a, a basic example. Again, a little tedious, but hopefully not, not too miserable. Um, take a look at another video. I'm going to do another example of one of these, hopefully one that's just a touch more complicated.